Joining me now is Malcolm Davis from the Australian Strategic Policy Institute. Malcolm, welcome. Thank you for joining me on the show. How concerning is this strategic partnership and what does it mean for Australia? It should be concerning for everyone. Essentially what we're seeing is China trying to create uh, uh, nodes of uh, political, economic and commercial presence in the Southwest Pacific that essentially create places that could then be turned into military bases down the track. So we're not yet at the point of PLA forces operating out of the Solomons or East Timor or Vanuatu, but that could happen in the coming years and that would fundamentally change Australia's strategic geography, it would change our strategy, our threat perceptions, everything. We would be facing for the first time since 1942 the potential for Australian cities to come under direct attack from an enemy very close to our shores. Well, you have mentioned the Solomon Islands and Vanuatu. I mean, this move comes as the Prime Ministers of those two nations declined to attend a summit for South Pacific leaders being hosted by Joe Biden. Is the West losing its influence in the South Pacific? And how can the government step up to that challenge? I think what's happening is the Chinese are coming in with suitcases of money uh, to engage in what's known as elite capture, uh, whereby they engage directly mm. with the key leadership figures in the Southwest Pacific states and essentially get them on side. They're not engaging with the people of the Southwest Pacific states who are very suspicious of, of Chinese intentions. But what they're doing is engaging in elite capture. Secondly, what's, what's happening is they're undertaking debt trap diplomacy whereby they invest heavily in these small states and when these small states can't pay back that debt, the Chinese say, well, we'll take uh, an airport or we'll take a port or you'll, you'll support us in the UN. So what, what we're seeing, I think, is a growth of Chinese influence and the Western response to this seems to be uh, essentially uh, not sufficient in terms of our ability to counter that. We can never pay bribes. We don't do that sort of thing. They can. Mm. Uh, but we need to be doing more in terms of essentially engaging with the leadership to try and get them to understand that, you know, Chinese engagement is not a win-win proposition for all. Quite right. Those elites need to understand that that short-term and often personal gain comes at an enormously high price. The US government has avoided a shutdown. I'll be getting into this a little bit later with Koshigata. But there is a part of it that I'd like to discuss with you. Part of the agreement between Republicans and Democrats that was made saw $6 billion in funding for the Ukraine taken off the table. And that's got major implications for the future of the US's support in the conflict. What did you make of this development? Look, I think it's hugely concerning. Uh, if that actually goes ahead, and there's some suggestion that uh, Speaker McCarthy may try to do a side deal uh, with the Democrats in the Senate to keep that funding going, but if it, that doesn't happen, uh, then I think that, that kind of undermines the US credibility when it says, we're, we're with you to the end, we're with you to as long as it takes. And it does send a signal to the Russians uh, that they can keep the war going. It emboldens Putin. It means that Putin feels that all he has to do is outlast the Americans, uh, wait until maybe Donald Trump gets elected in 2024, and then watch US support for Ukraine evaporate. It also sends a signal to China in the sense that the US lacks long-term resolve, and that's relevant in terms of China's intentions towards Taiwan. So this is really bad news for Ukraine. It's bad news for European security and it's bad news for US credibility if this actually goes ahead. And ultimately, it's a big hit for those messages to be sent that say the Western world doesn't see the cause of the Ukrainian people to be one that they're able to lock into from a values perspective for the long term. It does, and I think that what's happening is that uh, the Ukrainian counteroffensive is perhaps going a bit slower than anticipated. So there are, uh, shall we say, fraying uh, determination on the part of some Western actors. But I think what's most concerning is that you get these MAGA Republicans in Congress that essentially want to see Russia win, OK? And uh, they're doing all they can to assist that. They're aligned, of course, with Donald Trump. Uh, 
Uh, Trump has indicated that if he wins the presidency, then he'll essentially pull the rug out from the Ukrainians in the first 24 hours of his administration. That would send all the wrong signals to, firstly, Russia, because it would essentially mean that Russia is then free to build up for the next phase of the war. But it would also send, as I said, uh, send the wrong signals to China. And it does really undermine Western credibility when you're facing these really critical tests of our interests. It really is quite uh, foreign to the Australian ear to hear how much pro-Russia sentiment there is in the US at present. Thank you very much, Malcolm Davis, for your time and expertise tonight.